everybody, this is Urban Brody with Get It Made X. As you know, every month we we interview the member of the month. And today we have my friend James Robinson from Annapolis, Maryland. How are you doing today, James? I'm doing well, man. How are you doing today? Good, good. I know some people say Annapolis. Hopefully I said it right. Annapolis, right? Annapolis, you got it. Yep. I don't want no Maryland heads to butcher me for that. Um, nah. Yeah, dude, congrats on being member of the month. Uh, how does it feel first and foremost? Uh, you know, it feels for ta- fantastic. Fantastic one on. It's a, a, a great honor. I get it made is to help me tremendously. And uh, just with the, my screenplay. Yeah. And uh, just the writing and just the different things that they offer. It's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing network of people that Matt has put together. So I feel very fortunate and blessed. Absolutely. And we'll get into it more. But through the grapevine, I heard that you did score an eight on the blacklist. Congratulations. On Thank making you. and on that feat, because you know not everyone hits eights, and eights are hard. So congratulations on hitting an eight on the blacklist. We'll get into that in a second, but I would love to know your background in writing. Um, let's go sure. back to the very beginning. I like to ask people uh, how they got started in writing, why writing. Obviously, obviously it's not the easiest job ever. Uh, it's very tasking, a lot of sure. waiting. You, you need a lot of patience to succeed in writing. So for you, what was your pathway into screenwriting? Well, I've always loved to tell stories. I have two daughters and, you know, just them growing up, telling them stories. And, uh, you know, I feel if you have something that you're passionate about, you should do everything you can to share it. I feel like that's a gift. And uh, I remember sitting in a neighborhood a few years back in a, in a beach neighborhood in Delaware, and I'm looking at all these big, beautiful beach homes. I'm like, how in the world am I ever going to get here with my current, you know, c- kind of job that I do in healthcare? And it's clear as you and I are talking right now, I felt the voice say to me, you got a mind, use it. And I'm like, wow, it, it was pretty clear and you know, pretty direct. So I'm like, all right, you want, you asked for this. So get ready. <laughs> he said, um, I said, what was the reason? You know, when I heard that, I felt like it was God talking to me basically, you know? So I said, okay, if I'm going to ask a question, this is the one I want to ask. And I just started writing down what I felt coming into my mind. I said, what was the reason that Lucifer turned against God? What was the reason he turned against you? So I just started it was almost like God pulled back the curtain that my imagination probably going at the same time. And I just started writing down everything that I could imagine and what I felt like I was being told. And I thought this would make a really kick tail story, you know, trying to see how, you know, the creation of man was the reason that Lucifer's jealousy kicked in. And uh, so that basically birthed the, my first feature, the birth of evil. And uh, what a title. That. What a title. Yeah. Right. And I'm thinking, okay, that was cool. And then funny driving back over the Bay bridge in Maryland, you know, from the Eastern shore back to the Annapolis side, I heard the kill from 30 seconds to Mars. Okay. Jared Leto, right. Great song. And, you know, in the song, the lyrics, this was kind of the supernatural confirmation that I needed to know that I was, you know, not, you know, that I've really heard something special. And basically in the song, he's basically crying out, like, am I not good enough for you? You know, and, and it's part, part of the gist of the, the song. And I felt like that could be Lucifer screaming and crying at God saying, okay, now I'm going to destroy everything that you've created for good. And that's kind of why I started writing. So that song was a big inspiration. Me sitting in that neighborhood that I couldn't afford at the time was a big inspiration. And it's just funny how things are uniquely put together in your path. Yeah. And then I mean, just your skill of networking. I'm sure if you look back on how you first got started and now the, the people that you've been able to talk to and bring together, yeah. it's, just, it's an amazing thing. So that's kind of how I got started. And it just kind of opened up my creative mind a little bit and, it's kind of how I got broke out my iPhone in the car that day and just started writing notes there. I didn't have pen or paper. I love that. Laptop, so I, I love hearing I also, started. I also love hearing when songs inspire a writer, you know, cause I don't think I, we hear enough of that. Like I like to write to songs. Like I listen to a song and then I think of the, the tone and the emotion behind it. And I'm like, okay, let me write. So that's cool that the song helped you out. Yeah. I basically build a soundtrack for everything that I write. Nice. So I, I, I like if, if my character was a song. This is what he would be. This is the emotions yeah. he would feel. So I kind of try to incorporate that in all my writing. And it just, it really inspires you through the whole process. And so it's, for me, it works really, really well. Like if I ever get to the point where I'm actually making feature films, I'm going to give a soundtrack to each actor and be like, this is how I see it. This should keep you motivated for the, you know, yeah. three days to six months, whatever, whatever, however long you're here on set. So that is so cool. I love that story. Now let's talk about the blacklist. I mean, you, like I mentioned earlier, you hit, eight, a score of eight, which is hard. So talk about right. that. And what was that project? So the, the project is St. Nicholas and the Miracle of Christmas. I really enjoy writing about known characters and kind of doing a mashup with real historical, you know, history and 
biblical history and kind of tying all that together, kind of like uh, Seth Brandon Smith does with the Abraham Lincoln and the Vampire Hunter was a really good, you know, inspiration for that. The book was phenomenal. The movie was okay, but the book was great. And I, I really kind of like that, that genre. Anyway, so talking to Matt last fall, he's like, you know, the blacklist is where it's at. You got to get them to believe, you know, you can think you have the best story in the world, but basically you need somebody to kind of grade that and tell you that it's a good story. So me being, you know, sometimes we're a little overconfident, over cocky. I just sent it in anyway, right? Without any, you know, just rough draft, the first draft. I mean, there's spelling errors and everything. And I just said, oh, what the heck? I'll just see where I'm at. I got a five. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it was a waste of money. <laughs> so come back. I talked to Matt. He, then he puts me in touch with Katie Pine. Who's yeah. Part, I guess she's part, you know, Katie. Katie I know is, Katie. Yep. Katie is a gift from God dropped out of heaven for me. And, uh, she, you know, Matt put me with her and said, look, she could really help, sh- help shape your script and, you know, kind of get it. So it's, you know, readable for the industry folks that, you know, make the decisions. Mm-hmm. So basically, sorry, he uh, put me up with her. We started mm-hmm. our first meeting and went really well, started our second meeting. Sorry, I'm getting text like crazy. So our second meeting. Was, you know, the script is co- really coming together now. I mean, granted, the whole thing was done, but just the way she was able to see things that should be there, shouldn't be there, and just kind of help me shape and make it a little bit more sharp. And by the fourth meeting, I'm like, this is really good. Let me just send it in. And I knew we still had six meetings to go. So after four hours with Katie, it went from a five to an eight. So that was just four set. Yeah. So I was, I was pretty excited wow. about that. Yeah. And I told, I told Matt, I sent him the review and I'm like, man, now I know it's subjective, right? Because somebody else oh, yeah. can read it and, mm-hmm. and be like, Hey, you know, they might not like Christmas. <laughs> so then you're, so, but no, I, I was very happy. And then like, it, like I said, it was Matt's guidance and instruction on, you know, what I should do because he, he obviously knows, you know, I'm trying to break in here, you know, knocking on the glass door, let somebody let me in here. And, uh, but he, you know, he's been around just like you and Katie. So they kind of know, you know, the industry standards. And that was such a blessing for me. Love that story. It's always cool to see like where the script started to where it is now you know, right. and, and who helped you along the way. So kudos to Katie and, and Matt. Um, what have you, what have you gotten the most out of the experience with Ganymede X? So what was your favorite, what was your favorite thing to do with the, with, with Ganymede X? Maybe, um, you know, what the, your favorite part of being part of the program? Uh, I know it's redundant to ask part of the favorite part of being part of the program, but what, sure. what would you say is the, is the best part? The, the best part for me is working on the feature with Katie. Like that, you know, that's the thing that I poured my heart and soul into is trying to, you know, tell the backstory of St. Nicholas, Santa Claus. So starting him as a little boy, just having her come on board and just having that insight, like a mentor, you know, everybody likes a good mentor. Like we can, you're trying to do something yourself. It's, it's hard trying to do something with a mentor is hard, but at least you have somebody help guiding you. So you don't take too many lefts and rights. You can kind of stay straight and narrow. So, you know, that, that has been the, the golden thing for me. It's just, it's been amazing. And I, I can't, like I said, I can't thank Matt, Sylvie and Katie enough for kind of setting that up the way they have it. I, yeah. I told everybody, she, you should call her right away. If you have a script that you think is halfway decent, but she'll make it decent. I love that. I <laughs> so, yeah. love that. Um, have you been uh, on any sets of, of things that you wrote? Maybe you produced something or maybe you were able to be on set as a writer. No, not, not anything like that. When I was 11 years old, there was a mall that opened up in Glen Burnie, Maryland called Marley station mall. And they were I've heard of it. They, yeah. All right. Very good. Yeah, East Coaster, I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah. So they opened up, they, uh, they had just opened up and we were there after school, me and my sister and I, and my mom, and they had evening magazine was like a local Baltimore entertainment program locally. And they were doing a thing on bodyguards or something like that. And all security and bodyguards, somehow they tied those two together. And so the host grabbed me and my sisters. They saw us walking through the mall, two cute little kids, I guess, and say, Hey, will you be our bodyguards for this segment? So that's as close as I've had to being on camera. So no, but nothing, nothing, <laughs> but yeah, back then it was pretty cool. What do you hope to accomplish in the next few years as a writer? Maybe other positions in industry. Do you want to produce? Do you want to do other things? What, what's your, what's your ultimate goal? So, you know, there's a, a great line in the movie Young Guns where uh, Billy the Kid meets Pat Garrett, Emilio Estevez's character. And somebody, he, he sees Pat Garrett and goes, I bet you I'd be as big as him one day. Somebody mm-hmm. had asked me, a, you know, a while back, what do you want to do? Do you want to be the next Steven Spielberg or George Lucas? So Billy the Kid, he sees Pat Garrett, right? And he's like, what do you, you know, he's like, I bet you I'll be as big as him one day. And then he goes, nah, bigger. I always dream and want to do things really big. And I kind of shy away from people that don't because I know, and I know independently you kind of have to think that way, but I'm like, these, 
things that got really, really big started with a, a dream and a vision. And you just had to have a couple people believe in you. I mean, if you look at Star Wars it's, in itself, George Lucas just had this thought, this idea, and ba- it bloomed and blossomed from there. And just I just think about all the people, not just that got to work on the movie, but the people that made the toys and the people that did all these different things that are connected to Star Wars. I mean, at this point in America, I feel like everybody has either seen a Star Wars movie or bought a Star Wars toy for their kid or grandkid. Like, I feel like it's had such a wide net. And I feel like that's what I would like to do with my films. Like, I just feel like it's possible because I've seen it happen in, with other things. And I want to have, you know, that's the kind of team I would like to build. I would like to just build that, have that thing where people can really get behind. Because I think if we're all rowing the same way, there's nothing we can't do. And I just think it would be an, an awesome and amazing thing if the yeah. project is right. Well, why be the next Spielberg or next George Lucas when you could be the first James Robinson, right? Well, that that was that's what I was going to finish up with. Like, uh, they said, well, what do you want to be, the next George Lucas or Steven Spielberg? And I said, no, I want somebody to come and say, I'm going to be the next Jamie Robinson. There you go. My man. <laughs> I love talking to you, dude. I love talking to you. We can talk all day about film and, and projects. Where can folks find you on social media? Do you have an official site you want to share or just Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, just Facebook, Instagram, ID, IMDb, you know, just all the, the typical stuff that most writers, you know, would put their stuff and, you know, just general stuff like that. No website as of yet. One day, right? One day. There you go. Thank you so much, Jamie, for your time today. Congrats again on being member of the month for Getting It X. This is Aram Brody. Until next time, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you again soon, James. Thank you so much, man. Have a great night. You too.